Hi, y'all. Welcome back to the I Love You So Much podcast. If y'all are watching on YouTube, which by the way, you should be always linked below. Every single podcast episode is on YouTube. And I know a lot of y'all prefer to watch podcasts. I do that. We'll get into that because Theo Vaughn is currently on my TV. Um, anyway, so it's always on YouTube and you guys should watch it. Anyways, I'm sitting here in my new home. It's absolutely stunning. I have so many moving vlogs, so much moving content. I've already been back to hosting. I mean, I've been bus, party, club. I mean, I've literally never been to a club. I actually, not never. I hate clubs. I haven't been to a club recently, okay? But I've been around, not even around town. I've been around the USA, actually, and Mexico. I have been all over the place. Um, also, by the way, if y'all are on YouTube, let's welcome Fitz onto the show. He had absolutely no interest in getting off camera, and I understand. He is my son, after all. Actually, something about people calling their dogs, like, daughters and sons kind of, like, gives me the ick. I don't really know why I just did it, and also, it's kind of a really normal thing. I'm not really sure if it gives me the ick. I need to think about that one, because I, like, slightly got it, and sometimes it's cringy. Maybe it just depends on the person saying it. So, anyways, I won't say that. I, my son, my, I, I don't know. The thing about Fitz, Fitz is my dog, by the way. He's a big golden doodle. He is named after President Fitz from Scandal, and he is the most human-like dog you've ever seen, and he's massive. If you guys saw on my Instagram stories this week, I had a little dinner party, and he just was, you know, sitting on the couch with the girlies, and he... He's just, he's like a human. So it feels fitting to say son because it doesn't feel fitting to say dog because I know that he knows. You know what I mean? Like this morning, Macy slept over last night and we were getting ready to go to, go to our workout. And she was like, who are you talking to? And I was like, Fitz, I'm talking to Fitz because I know that he can hear me. Anyways, very off topic. Like I said, I've been all over the USA and Mexico. Okay, I went to Cabo been in New York. I'm going to New York this week. I've been all over the place. Um, I went to Chicago. We had our live show there. I was in Nashville for our live shows. They were absolutely fabulous. Thank you to everyone who came. I couldn't believe how many of y'all were at there. The Chicago one was so big. And some of y'all flew in from or came in from Boston, Montreal, in Florida that I know of and I know there's more but these are the people that I met at the meet and greet and it was just such a fabulous time I want to do so many more live shows it was just so incredible so if you guys came to the shows thank you so much um I'm trying to give you all a little life update oh you might be watching on YouTube and thinking Kenzie why do you look like that let me explain I just came from a spray tan sugared and bronze just opened here in Dallas um there's a good chance it opened about a year or two ago, but uh, in my head it just opened because I just found out about it. And let me tell you, booking a last minute spray tan, because I love, I normally go to Dallas 180, which is my favorite. No one besides people in Dallas care about this. Anyways, I love them. They're my favorite, but sometimes it's hard to get on last minute because it's like a team and they come to you, whatever. Um, I am not that planned out these days with my tans and I, I actually turned into a lobster again. No one cares about this. So long story short, I got a spray tan from Sugared and Bronze, level four, of course. Um, and I, I just feel kind of stunning, even though obviously I look crazy, um, and I haven't washed it off yet, but something about it, I just, I feel extra stunning. Um, and I got this spray tan because I'm going to Eras this weekend, not one night, but two nights. I got tickets originally. I invited my sister. I mean, after Lauren couldn't go, <laughs> I invited my sister. I'm taking her. I paid for her ticket. I am such a good sister. Let us not forget Anytime she says something mean about me on social media or makes some sort of Snyder mark on the vlogs, let us go back to this moment when I chose to take her to Taylor Swift. Do you know how hard it is to get those tickets? It's very hard. Actually, one of y'all sold them to me at the like actual pre-sale price, which I really appreciate. Thank you so much. Um, but anyways, I would just like to point out that I did my good deed of um, the year. The century even. I'll, I'll stick with decade. I won't get too greedy. So anyways, I would like us to remember that. Um, anyways, I'm really excited to go to Eras this weekend. Staying in tonight. I'm going to watch Reputation. I'm going to get really prepared. I did the whole thing today. I did nails, blowout, and spray tan all in one day. And let me tell you, um, girl maintenance is not for the weak. It's also not for the poor. And that is what I am now. I have no money because of this maintenance schedule. And also, I have no time because it took every single second of my day today and I can't do anything else because it took pretty much my entire day so here I am it's 4 p.m and I finally have started my work which I'm not proud of 
Oh, okay. Before we get into today's episode, we have Melissa Wood on the show. I have wanted Mrs. Melissa Wood Health on the podcast for so long. Also, for my first like year of following her, I don't, I guess I like, well, I don't know. Obviously, I knew Melissa Wood Health. I knew Health was in her last name, but just saying Melissa Wood felt really weird to me. You know what I mean? Like she's Melissa Wood Health. But anyways, we have Melissa Wood on to the podcast. I love that woman. Love following her. I've been a subscriber of her site for so long. I love her workouts. Um, I need to get more into her meditations because I need to meditate, let me tell you. Um, she's just so fabulous and lovely, and I loved having her on. And we are talking again about navigating your 20s. But she is talking about like clarity. This doesn't even matter if you're in your 20s or not, it's for everyone. Finding clarity, peace, confidence, like all of those things. And just listening to her speak, I totally get why people love her meditations because you listen to her speak normally, and I'm like zen. I'm so calm. And I'm not naturally a calm nor a zen person. Um, I have to work really hard at it. And yeah, she's just fabulous. And I'm very grateful she came on the show. And I just love her so much. So anyways, we're going to get into that soon. But before we do, I would talk about something that's so near and dear to my heart these days. And that is Theo Vaughn. Theo Vaughn is the funniest person in this entire world. There is no one funnier than him. I have seen him around, like I guess, over the years, I think. Really, it was a couple months ago, I think I realized, like, who he was, and I started keeping up a little bit. Then I started listening to the podcast, and I moved. When you move, you have a lot of things you have to do around the house. So then I started watching podcasts and listening to podcasts, and I started listening to this past weekend. And it is the funniest show I've ever listened to in my entire life. And also, I just listened, it's on my TV right now, to episode 379, because I saw it going viral on TikTok, and it's Theo Vaughn, like, talking about therapy and his feelings, and, like, his relationship with his mom, and, like, honestly it like made me tear up and I am mentioning that because I need y'all to go listen to that episode and then DM me about it because I've been telling my friends to listen to it my friends don't actually give a fuck about me they're not gonna listen to it okay so I need you guys to listen to it and DM me so I will have people to talk to about this episode because it was just so fabulous and I just I love that man I there's just like honestly protect Theo Vaughn at all cost guys um also this week I made a little summer powerpoint I'm gonna be doing a lot more solo podcast episodes before we I'm going to get into this and touch on this. I really have a vision, almost like a rebrand of the podcast. I'm going to do the book series. I want to make like Navigating Your 20s kind of its own thing. I want to do like almost like Kinsey's Home. That's more like funny, dry humor, like maybe like fully produced in this house. And like, I don't know, I just have like a vision. I want to travel less. I want to do more solos. I want to do like more of like my friends and family here and make it like a Kinsey's House podcast because I feel like so much of my like social life actually revolves around my house anyways and just like my day-to-day obviously I live here but a lot goes on here and I just have a whole vision of things that I want to do um speaking of I made a summer powerpoint and I presented it to my friends last night you guys might have seen it on tiktok on instagram on youtube shorts I mean I whore myself out everywhere so you could have seen it anywhere um And I'm determined to make this summer incredible. Macy and I are going to record an entire podcast episode on this. So stay tuned. But if you guys want to see my summer PowerPoint, it's on TikTok. Kinsey the Texan. Oh, I do want to be doing a lot more solos, um, like I said. So I want you guys kind of involved. Let me find my um, podcast phone number. If you guys want to be on the podcast, whether you have a question, you have a story to tell, you have an idea to share, you just want to say literally anything that's interesting um, that might make it on the show, Give um, a little ring to 866-994-ILYSM and you leave a voicemail to be featured in a solo podcast episode. Maybe you need advice. Maybe you need a crazy story. Um, I'm really up for it all and I am very interested in your lives and I want to hear more. So I want like more of like listener segments, you know? By the way, the beige puff bag from the Okine is available this week. It is the best thing we've released. I say that about everything because it only gets better and better. I have been, it's in the background of this video actually, I'm pretty sure because it's just on my counter. It wasn't actually planned. Um, I wear this beige puff bag everywhere I go. You can fit your laptop in it. If it's like a 15 inch, you can like AirPods, Maxes, like I bring it to Pilates, I bring it to the mall. I bring it literally everywhere with me. So it is available now at the Okine.com. You guys have probably seen it all over my Instagram. It's the best bag ever. So go shop. Anyways, without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy this podcast episode. As always, be sure to subscribe, follow us, um, all the things. I love you guys. And let's welcome Melissa on to the show. I am so excited to have you here today. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here and honestly to like talk to your generation. I'm, <laughs> this is one thing about me is that I am technically Gen Z. Like I'm right on the cusp, but I really write out the Gen Z thing. 
You do. I've made it like a personality trait. Yeah. <laughs> At first I thought it was lame and I was like, I don't want to be Gen Z, those losers. And then I realized that I love Gen Z. Oh, I mean, Gen Z is very with it. Yes. Yeah, so I'm like, I am Gen Z. Yes. You're Gen you know? Z. I think it's like my birthday is the cutoff. <laughs> it is. I did my research before yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was like, well, technically Kenzie is Gen Z. Yeah. So. Oh my God. I'm so yeah, no, I'm happy that you to noticed. be speaking with. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like Gen Z is just uber confident. Yeah. There is like an uber confidence and this, it's very different than the way that I was in my 20s. There's almost like more of a knowing that comes off, at least from what I observe. I wonder if you feel that way because of who you were around who is in Gen Z. Because I think at the same time, there's so many people who are so impressionable in like comparing online more than ever and dealing with so many. There's obviously always been like the health fads. Right. But I think it can be a little bit more in your face with social media. But I do agree. I think that Gen Z is more of like carving a path for themselves than other generations have been. Oh, for sure. But I do, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I do think that's probably like my biggest, I, I would say concern with your generation yeah. is just like social media is the norm. It's like, this is what you grew up with. So there are so many positives, but there are so many negatives that come with that. And that's definitely something I like, I think about when I, I think of your generation. Yeah. It's, I think it, and the other thing is so many people are achieving and doing so much at a young age because of social media, or it seems that way, or maybe it's not more than before. It's just now in your face. So I think, I mean, I am a Leo and I'm an Enneagram three, meaning the achiever. I am every single personality type that is like outgoing, overachiever, go-getter, like productive, all of those things. So I've had a hard time with like hustle culture and not, you know, succumbing to that because that's naturally like who in, you are. It's naturally who I am. Right. And I don't love that aspect of it. So I think for me, it's, it is a little bit difficult when I'm, I feel like I'm constantly seeing that, but I try to really curate who I follow and what I'm seeing to like protect myself. If that makes sense. I think that's really important. I think that that is where a lot of just like the mindfulness component really comes into play. And um, I I wonder, I mean, it, it's I almost feel like I'm interviewing you. I wonder if it's because there's such a mindfulness movement, right? Where it's like meditation and movement has has really taken an incredible turn for, for the best, I think, right? Like mm -hmm. there's really been this evolution of what it really means to be and to feel well. And when I think of your generation, I, I see it's like kind of like the flip of a coin here. It's like, yeah. you, you seem like they, I mean, Gen Z seems to be so like in tune, but then I, on the flip side, I, I wonder if it's because of that's what social media kind of portrays yeah. to us and what is really going on. You know, I know like for myself personally as someone who has suffered from anxiety and my own stuff, I, I wonder with even just like the uptick of a lot of mental health stuff going on, how that affects us long term. Absolutely. But the other good part of social media is there's so many – I mean, you think, I mean, I have been medicated most of my life for anxiety and depression. Okay. I'm in therapy. I'm very pro medication. I'm very yeah. pro all those things. But a lot of people don't, I grew up in a family that has so many mental health issues. A lot of people, I got lucky in the sense that I was taught ways to deal with it mm -hmm. outside of just medication. So like mindfulness practices, working out, like movement, all of that stuff that, and just like wellness things in general. Like I always joke, like my mom now is like basically going to Paltrow. Like that <laughs> is basically what she's become. Um, and so that was really helpful, but also, and I know so many friends who like, they, there was really no guidance. And then it's like, there was, there was no in between on like getting better and helping like lifestyle changes. So I think social media is great too because it's like people like you or whoever it is that are sharing like mindfulness and movement in a way that's very healthy and isn't in a 
bad like health trend fad, whatever it might be. Yeah, no, I I really I'm glad that it doesn't appear to be that way because it there's so many things that you can do. And and listen, I think without a doubt, of course, like for me, it's like meditation and movement is the foundation of it all. But there's so many other things like the amount of time we're consuming social media and things that I think a lot of people turn a blind eye to that really needs to be talked about because it's just gotten to the point where, I mean, for instance, like the past couple of days, I, I didn't post on social media and it's like my entire business is driven by yeah. social media. And I just, I like was coming off something and wasn't feeling a hundred. And I was just like, you know what? I'm not posting. And I think it's, it's so normal for people to make such a big deal out of like not posting for a day or two. And like, guys, I'm taking a break. And it's like, you're taking a breath. Yeah. Like, and, and I think it's, and I even found myself for like a moment being like, oh, I'm taking, I'm taking a little time. But it's like, but you're taking a day, 48 hours. Like, and it, I, the amount of things that I completed and not even from like a productivity standpoint, just things that have been kind of building up in my life where I've been feeling swallowed that I haven't even been able to like face because I'm so consumed a lot of the time. I'm being honest here with the things that are on my plate. And listen, I have two kids. I have a husband. I have a business and a team and a community that I show up for every day that a lot of the time, the things that, and I prioritize myself, but like the things that I need to make me feel better, I like push to the side. Like as simple as organizing like the piles in my room that that stuff can really weigh on you mentally. Like mm -hmm. it's crazy how much a cluttered, crowded yes. space can clutter your mind. And I mean, I took the two days I wasn't on social media. I put things away. I donated things. And I, I mean, it sounds ridiculous. Like even today when I was sharing, I'm like, I have to be so gentle with the way I share this because it's like, you know, we're off for two days. But it's just become such a thing that if we're not showing and sharing everything, that mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it's, it's wild. Yeah. I mean, do you feel that way? Do you feel that like- I have to show everything? Yeah. I mean, you're, yeah. you're super active as am I, and I do love it, but it's interesting what happens when you step away. Like, do you ever take a break? Rarely. Mm -hmm. Lauren Bostick is so good about this and she's so good at it. And she's like, you have to make people like want, like you have to give some sort of mystery. I agree. I've started on, I started on YouTube 10 years ago. So yes. like I have shared so much of my life. I still post to YouTube every single week. Yep. So it's so much of my actual life. And I will say since moving back to Texas, it is so much easier for me to like turn off and on because I'm not at events all the time. Most of my friends, I have so many friends in this space, most of them live in New York. So like when I hang out with my friends in Texas, they have more traditional jobs or a little bit more normal, AKA they're, like, they're not showing their entire lives on the internet, you <laughs> right. know? And while like now they are in videos sometimes and stuff, it does give me a nice separation. But for so long, I felt like I couldn't do a single thing without it. And I had like, ma I lost like very major family members around me and I had so much like trauma happening and there was a buildup because I wouldn't stop. Face it. Yeah, I wouldn't face it. I was ignoring it with everything else. Yeah. So I finally did that. And it was honestly by moving to Texas. It was really like my 2020, which I was literally closed on my house February 2020. Like how crazy is that? That's the amazing. luckiest girl in the world, actually. Um, and so it was like obviously just like so meant to be. And I was like, that was the time that I needed to like actually like uh I don't mean COVID, I mean getting the house before that, to right, be very right, clear. Right, of course. Um, but moving out of that space and not being stuck in LA and being just in Texas, like my home, it was just what I like had to do. Now I think it's a lot easier for me just because of the lifestyle that I have in Texas. It's way harder for me when I'm in like LA and New York, which is where I'm a lot at a lot. Right. Just depends. 
Yeah. I mean, of course it's circumstantial and like it ebbs and flows, but I think I have, I've really just been tapping into how I feel when I do pull back and like step away and maybe share a little bit mm-hmm. less or save it for an event or or whatever it is. And it's just, it's interesting because I feel like it's just become, it's what everyone it's, does. By yes. the way, every generation. Yeah. Like it's, it's not, I mean, I was like talking to a friend who's much older than me and the person's partner is sharing on social too much. It's becoming a problem. Like it's, it's just, I don't know. It's, it's interesting that I'm here with you today. And this has just been on my mind for the past couple of days because I'm like, what if, like, what if we all paid more attention to like what was in front of us, Mm -hmm. like to be more present and that I, I will tell you, like, that is, the thing that I strive for the most. Like I really am working on being with what is in front of in front of me. And it's so easy to be distracted all the so time. Easy. I had this conversation with my husband last night too. Like it's like we both have businesses and you know, trying to like meet someone in the middle, it's it can be so challenging. And and I just Like I think back to my 20s and I am so (laughs) glad I was the last one of like my friend group to like get on Facebook. Like I was, I was like so not with it. I didn't understand it. I was like, no. And then finally got on it. I was also the last one of my friend, my, my circle to like get on Instagram and you know, it's really cracked open a whole new world for me, which I'm so incredibly grateful for. But I think we really have to do some inner work and create these boundaries within ourselves for like, what, like what space are we giving for ourselves where it's not just everything is content. Yeah. The word is so swallowing. (laughs) Like I'm just like everyone's shooting content. Everything's content. Like, and it's, it's, and, and I really am not shaming it. I'm not. It's just at what point are people like living their lives because that's what makes them happy. And this is what makes them tick. And, 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 and even shifting that perspective on like sharing or like documenting your life. Like it's just, I think the word content can get so clouded where people are losing themselves and focusing more. I mean, I was listening to you talk about this on The Skinny Confidential where you really pulled back at one point with YouTube, right? Because it was like so clickbait heavy and you no longer really wanted to like do that I thing. I didn't want it to didn't make a feel video. Right, yeah. right. But I think that's what the world, a massive majority of the world right now is focused on. Yes. Right? It's just one of those things where like for me, I, I and I remember at this point in YouTube, I was like, I – do not want to film a single thing that I wouldn't do organically. Yes. So I'm not going to film a video that's like DIY. I'm not a DIY. I'm so lazy. Like I hire people. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like I would rather lose more money than like do. Right. So it's like, I have to just like stay true in my yourself. own, true to myself and like what feels good. And also like I'm moving into another house right now and I'm like, I want a sauna. I want a cold punch. I want everything. I want it to be peaceful. Mm-hmm. I want it to be hosting. I don't want it. I don't want my phone in my room. Like I'm like, It's weird. I'm like, I do feel like there's been such a shift in my life in the past, like, six months where I was listening to your episode with Gabby, even about, like, talking about kids online. Obviously, I'm single and 25. But I was like, I don't know what I'm going to even want to share when I'm married. Like, Mm -hmm. and that's not that far away from me. Like, it's in the next decade, probably. So it's like, I don't know. Just the – it's something that has been in my head a ton lately. But I wanted to talk to you about like advice for your 20s more specifically. Something that you also said on the episode with (laughs) Gabby, you guys are talking just a little bit about the hustle. And you said 
that one of the biggest lessons that you learned was like it's way more about what's going on within and like the outside will work itself out. Yeah. So speaking to a girl in her 20s who is more confused, driven and like willing to do the to do the work, what does that mean for that girl? I love this question because I think it it's it's so easy easy to get distracted by all of the stuff and all of the things everyone's doing and to live in that comparison mode, especially at that point in your life. I know I certainly did. And it was honestly the driving force that got me to like realize I was like doing all the things and I had never really taken the time to like go inward and like to sit with myself. And that can be, there's so many different forms, but I think there's really something powerful about sitting in stillness and really just giving yourself that time, like carving out that dedicated space with yourself to just be and to breathe and to connect so deeply with your breath and to let all of the things, right? Like the thoughts, the lists, the exes or the person that you like. And do you want to do those plans tonight? What, what am I going to make? Am I going out to dinner? Like let all that stuff come up because I think people feel that when they attempt to sit in a meditation that they can't meditate because that occurs. That's human nature. Like that's naturally going to happen. So to like be with it and as all of that stuff, right, it's like finding that true calm in the chaos of life, like as it's coming up to make that choice, it's a commitment to self, that conscious choice with yourself to come back to your breath and to focus on the breath and let like the sirens and the doorman call up. And it's really, um, I always like to think of it as like this experiment with self and to see like what comes up. And, you know, after um, I know you do morning pages and, mm -hmm. and I think it's also a great opportunity to like write it out to like get it out because there's, there is so much confusion and you're kind of like, do I want to do this? I don't know. I majored in this. And th you, there's just like, there's so much uncertainty. At least I felt that way in my twenties. And I was at this time that I'm like literally visualizing in my mind right now in my first apartment that I ever lived in by myself. I always, I was like always dating someone or breaking up with someone. I had never really a time with myself. And this was one of the first times. And if there's anything I can recommend <laughs> for <laughs> anyone in their 20s is to like take a lot of time with being with yourself, being single. Like yeah. what's wrong with being single? Thank you. Oh my. Like yes. people select to be single. Like yeah. it's, it's a choice. You know, I'm sure you could date many people, but maybe you're <laughs> choosing, you. <laughs> of course, to be with yourself, to learn yeah. more about yourself, to discover what you want. Um, and yes, date people, date people. It's a beautiful thing to to get to know. And then, you know, after writing it out, I think we're so quick to – crowd ourselves with plans and and take the classes that our friends want to take or go to the places that our friends want to go to or go to the bars and drink what our friends want to drink when you know I I I thought about this knowing I was going to be here with you and, and I always say like if there's anything that I could suggest for any like even like my 20 year old self it's to be who you are but I really feel that's evolved because I don't know that you know who you are in your 20s. Mm -hmm. You're discovering it. By the way, I'm in my I turned 40 this year. I'm still discovering who I am. I think it's a constant just evolution of really realizing things that make you feel good and things that 
don't make you feel good. And to, to anyone who's maybe even working a job that they don't love or in a relationship that they don't like or has a friend group that maybe doesn't feel the best, I would challenge that person to really like tap into the way that they feel. So it's less of like be who you are and it's like listen to how you feel. Listen to what's coming up for you. And even if you are in that job that you don't love, like what can you do in the day to like bring, this sounds crazy, but I'm telling you, this is where things really shifted in my life, to bring more love to like what I'm doing. Like even when I was really towards the end of like my modeling career and I was fit modeling a lot and it was really exhausting. I was feeling really drained by it. I'd been doing it for 10 years. I knew it's not what I wanted to be doing, but I had no freaking idea what I wanted to do, you guys. No idea. There was no thought. There wasn't even like an inkling in my mind that I was going to be having an app one day yeah. sharing meditations and workouts. Like <laughs> I'm telling you, I was so disconnected from myself. But I loved fitness and I loved wellness. Even though I had a really bad relationship to myself, I was also bulimic at this time in denial it was like my own deepest, darkest secret that I would never let anyone know because God forbid it didn't look perfect enough. And when I started waking up and prioritizing meditation, I've been meditating for well over a decade at this point in my life now, and doing the work, really doing the work every single day, no matter what in my life came up, even if I didn't want to do it, I knew that my life depended on it, that my happiness, that taking care of my mental health depended on me getting up, sitting in silence, doing that work. I journaled a lot at that point in my life. And then I spent a lot more time with myself. I started saying no to a lot of things. Yeah, that's huge. Everything that you just said is kind of like the era that I've been in. Mm -hmm. Like I stopped dating. It's been, I mean, now it's, that's recently picked up again, but I stopped for two years because that's I had fine. been like uh, same. There'd always been someone around and I had been ignoring myself for so long. And I finally got silent, which was the scariest thing at the time. The idea of sitting alone, and I would had always been someone who really liked alone time. Mm -hmm. So when I got to the point where I was afraid to be by myself, I was like, that's a little bit scary. And it was the best, I'm like recording an entire solo episode on it this week because it was the best thing I could have ever done for myself and like getting to know myself. But on the topic of like figuring out what makes you feel good, what doesn't, a few years ago, my friends and I, we, for some reason, we like gave ourselves homework for the week and we made lists of like things that refuel us. And we were like 21, so I don't know why we did this. Things that refuel us and things that drain us. And it was so crazy what I came back with because the things that I thought refueled me were not what actually refueled me. And I think about that often because it helps me like take stock. Like the past week, I felt very disconnected from myself. And I'm like going back to those exercises that I learned from a friend because it really is... It's the biggest game changer. But for me, my biggest issue in my 20s has been like needing to be alone and needing to get silent so that I even know who I am. Like I wasn't, mm -hmm. I was like, I have no idea who I am. I'm so confused. I have so much like in my head going on right now and I just needed to get silent. And that was what changed my life like completely. I think that's so beautiful. And I, I really think even just learning more about you that like your parents seem to have such a positive impact on you. The both positive and negative, you know. <laughs> Love them though, you know. Okay, parents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, we all have our stuff. <laughs> but you you have a lot of tools. Yeah, yeah. At your age, like I I mean, I was getting into this work really when I was like 26, 27. But still, like you've been doing this for a while and you're, mm -hmm. it's, that's beautiful. I think it's so great that you're sharing all of this. 
um, with your platform because it just it, like it makes me so happy that people want to listen to this stuff because yeah. this is what's changed my life. Like, you know, people can see what I'm doing and I am telling you right now that that work that I was doing in my apartment alone is what has me here yeah. and waking up every single day and still choosing myself no matter what the hell is going on in my life. And yes, I have kids. I have a lot of responsibility. But my number one responsibility is to take care of myself so that I'm fully able to step in and do everything with my whole heart. Because if if I didn't, I wouldn't be able to fully be, I want to be able to be here. I want to be able to do all of the things that make me feel so aligned with myself. And I love that list that you made. I, what I did is I made a list of all of the things. So I took a weekend, like it's, it sounds like a lot of time, but like taking a little weekend with yourself and making no plans, not talking on the phone with people. It can sound torturous. It is so beautiful. And it's, I, I invite you all to have a date weekend with yourself. It's incredible what can come up. And tears, like a lot of tears. You can feel lonely. You can feel all the feels. Feel it. Don't run away from it. That's what scares me about social media yeah. with your generation. I, I don't know that people are really feeling and facing their, what's coming up for them. They're not. I they're can, masking yeah. it and they're making videos and they're talking about it. But are you feeling it? Are you really being with it? Because I'm here to tell you guys from someone who didn't feel it for a really long time, there comes a point when it gets so powerful and so strong and the knocks become like, it no longer is like this little knock. It's like someone's banging on that door and the door is going to come down. And I think if there's anything that I can do to share to help people really never let it get to that point is is one of my missions with the work that I do is to have people step into their power to really strengthen their intuitive voice. And that list that I made was I wrote a list of like all of the things that lit me up, like anything that just made me feel happy. And it was like the simplest things. And like if you think about your day too, like even for me now at this point in my life, like it is the simplest things that make me my happiest. Like being able to like have my morning routine, be with my kids in the morning, walk them to school. Like it's it's never anything that really like moves mountains, but it does. Yeah. Because it brings you back to yourself. It like makes you feel connected to like, what are we here doing if we don't know who we are? And, and I mean, I, I wish I saved that list to this day. Cause it was just, it was like having a cup of coffee with myself. I went rollerblading for an hour. I had a custom salad from chopped. Like I'm telling you, it was like the simplicity. And I just looked at that list. This is when I hated my job. I looked at that list and I was like, every single thing that I wrote down is connected to wellness and is connected to feeling good. And I feel my best when I take the best care of myself. And by the way, that doesn't mean that you can't like go out on weekends, dance the night away, do your things. You're young. I get it. Like I experimented with things too, but it gave me this sense of like it was like this real knowing that I had never felt in my life before. And I, that was like, that was when I like made a, I shifted things the next day. I like signed up for the, um, an online nutrition course, um, IIN. And, and it was like, even though I didn't quit my job, I had to still work that job, but I started taking all my free time that I was giving to everybody else yeah. and I started giving it to myself that's huge and I'll have to have you come back on to talk about this more in depth of like figuring out what your passions are but there's so many I get so many messages being like how mm -hmm. do you figure out what you want to do I have no idea I don't know where I want to take my career and like that is even though it is the small things I think you have to just know yourself like it's that's the small stuff that leads to the big stuff like you it all tied back to wellness Oh, yeah. 
uh, can I share something on that? Mm -hmm. Because if there's anything I can suggest, it's to stop trying to figure it out. That's really good, actually. Because it's a push. And when there's a push, there's a force. And there's no flow that can channel through the energy in your life. My best advice for people who are like, I don't know what it is, pay attention to what really like gets you excited. Like what is it like tea? Like is it like it could be something that you're just not connected to. You're not paying attention to a lot of the time because people are disconnected from self. So it's like first you got to do the work. You got to get back. To me, meditation is the foundation of like coming back and building that inner peace with yourself. And then movement is how we move it. We move the energy. You can't have stagnant energy. We are constantly thinking so many thousands of thoughts, like even in just several minutes, we've got to, we've got to move it. We got to move all that stuff. And then it's to have like write things down. Like I keep, I write notes in my in my phone, I also carry a planner. I'm very old school and we'll just write things down, like simple things that I love that I maybe wasn't even aware of before. That's really been happening for me now. And like get curious with it. Like, is there a group that you could join? I don't know. Like there's just everything these days. Like there's something connected to everything that I think people need to get curious and I, I also think a lot of people are looking for others to give you the answer. Like yeah. it is our duty to really like come to this place with ourselves. And, and it, it really comes from, I think, strengthening that intuitive voice. I love that. And to do that, you have to spend time alone. Which you is do, scary, guys. but the more you do it, here's the thing. Oh, this is the last thing I'll say. The more time I spend alone, the less I want to be around anyone else, you know? <laughs> so I'm like, that's my issue now with dating. I'm like, I love being alone now. Like, I, I went a little too extreme, so we're, we're going back. Same, actually. But the easier, like, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. And yes. it's, it's more of like a routine and it's less scary. It is. You're like an evening. You love to do your evening. Oh, Me yes. too. And my morning routine. It's what, oh, my same. God. I die for that stuff. Oh. Absolutely. Oh, my God. Okay. Live for it. We need to wrap this up because we've got things <laughs> to do today. Um, where can they find you? I'm like, I only have this amount of time. I'm like, so what else? <laughs> <laughs> Story, that's me, actually. <laughs> You can find me at Melissa Wood Tepperberg and at Melissa Wood Health is where you'll find all of the workouts, meditations. You guys, we have seven day free trial. We have literally of everything there. We share recipes. Um, there's something for everyone. And I am Melissa Wood Health on TikTok as well. And what's my YouTube? Melissa Wood Health. Yay. Yes, I know. We're, we've resurfaced the YouTube channel and we're going to be giving that some love in life. Amazing. Thank you for coming on. Thank you so much. Oh, and melissawoodhealth.com is the website. Very I will important. have everything in the show notes. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Love you guys. Subscribe and I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye.